Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to continue our discussion on motion effects. More specifically, we're going to talk about an effect that you can apply to clips in your timeline to add motion effects to them. In the previous talk about motion effects, we specifically talked about creating them inside the preview window, but what if you already have footage in your timeline that you want to manipulate the time of? Well, this is where we're going to get in and use a very specific effect to do it. And I want to show you how we can do time ramps dynamically inside of the timeline very quickly and very easily utilizing this effect. All right. Now, before we get rolling, I do always want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to our sponsor, Video Guys. You know I always talk about them. They are your source. If you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, you can check out the show notes below to find the links for the version of Media Composer that you're looking to get the subscription for. Don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your license purchase, purchasing it through Video Guys. And I also want to remind you that if you do like this tutorial, you like this tutorial series, please don't forget to like and subscribe to these tutorials. I want to make sure that you guys are aware every time new tutorials come out, I try to produce them. I try to do every Friday. Sometimes it's every Thursday or every Saturday, but I try to get them out every Friday so that you have the weekend to sit down, watch them, take in as much as you can. So please help like, subscribe, and share these across social media so that we get the word out there about Avid Media Composer. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you or your team are looking for one-on-one -on -one personalized Media Composer training, don't forget, you can always send an email to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. I record all of the lessons we do. I customize them specifically for what you or your team are looking for. And I make sure that when we're done, there's never any questions about what you wanted covered. We get right down to the nuts and bolts of it so that you get everything done you need to get done in Media Composer to keep that workflow on track. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for the introduction. Let's just jump into Media Composer and let's get started. All right, so as you can see, we are inside of Avid Media Composer and we are inside our first timeline. Now, I wanted to use this timeline because it's a perfect example of us wanting to get in and manipulate time, but it's a little bit different than in the first lesson we talked about with motion effects, because in the first lesson, let's just take this shot here as an example. I'm just gonna hit F7 to match frame. We have our talent running out of frame, and if we wanted to slow this down, what we would do is we would basically take this shot. I would mark an in and out point. I would come down here to the motion effect editor. And you'll remember we would get in, set our speed. We would come down. We'd say either create or create and render. It would create that motion effect. And then we'd edit it into our timeline. All right. Now that's all great and everything, except for the fact that in this case, we actually already have the clip in our timeline right here. And I'm not going to jump through all of those hoops again basically to add a motion effect to this shot. Now, the example that we're going to use is maybe once we get to right when our psycho killer comes out right about there, this is where we're going to have the speed adjustment happen. What I'm going to do is just add an edit to my timeline here. And maybe we'll just cut that speed down to like 50% or something like that, just to give it a little bit more dramatic effect. All right. Now, again, I said we're not going to jump through the same hoops that we jumped through before to do this motion effect by basically match framing it, marking in and out points and all that type of stuff. So how are we gonna go about doing this? Well, this is where we're gonna get in and utilize a time warp effect. So to do that, fairly self-explanatory, we know that it's an effect, so I'm simply gonna hit Command or Control and eight. It is a time effect. So I'm gonna navigate all the way down to the bottom to the time warp category. And then I'm going to navigate up and you'll notice that we have some presets in here, like some time ramps, zero to 100%, 100% to zero, freeze frames, reverse motion, speed boost and bump, trim to fill. But for us, we're going to utilize a time warp effect. So what I'm going to do is simply take time warp and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto my shot. All right. Now, what is important to keep in mind, I'm just going to hit play here is that with the time warp effect on my clip, nothing actually happens by default. Because keep in mind, the time warp effect is going to keep everything, I'll, I'll say, sort of on the level. All right, it's not going to get in, make a noticeable change right away because it doesn't know what you want it to do. All right, so let's get in and let's talk about this. So much like with any other effect, what we're going to do is we're going to step into effects mode. However, you'll remember in our previous lesson where we talked about keyframes, 
we had the effect editor to get in and to manipulate things with keyframes and such and the like. Well, you'll notice if I hit shift and Y to call up the motion effect editor now, it looks a little bit different. Now, what I'm going to do is just to close the speed graph for just a second because I want to draw your attention to the fact that we're actually not going to be changing very much in the motion effect editor by default because our source is coming in progressive, our output is coming in progressive. I'll talk a little bit more about what's going to happen when we have to actually get in and change the field type and the source and the output in the next lesson. I actually decided to extend motion effects a little bit uh, by another lesson because I think there's more to talk about like adding 3-2 pull down and 23.976 and 29.97 timelines and things like that. All right, so what we're now going to do is I'm simply going to open up, in this case, the speed graph. Now, we're going to talk mostly about the speed graph. We do have another one in here called the position graph. But for me, most of the work I do is inside of the speed graph. Now, you'll notice that if I come back to the beginning here, all right, you'll notice that I have a keyframe already added in here. Now, it is a keyframe. It is actually also our anchor. Now, how do I know that? Well, you'll notice right down here, I have this little blue icon that looks exactly like an anchor. There's an anchor right here. You'll see set uh, source anchor frame at selected keyframe, which is totally fine. But what's important to keep in mind is that you'll notice that the time code is 523. And you'll notice that the time code of our clip is 523 as well. That's why we want the anchor point to start right there. All right. And what I'm going to do is because this is going to be a hard cut example, basically we're going to hard cut to that speed change. I can actually manipulate the time in one of two ways. I can simply take the keyframe and just drag it to where I want it to 50% or if I wanted to just drag it sort of down to here, I can do that. Or what I can do if I wanted to be very specific, for example, let's say I wanted this speed ramp or this speed change to be at 33%. I can simply punch in 33, hit enter, and now when I come back and press play, you'll see that our actress runs out. She comes in. She cuts down to slow-mo. And of course, now because we've slowed her down, what I ha now have to do, of course, is to extend this shot right down to the end here. Just like such as everybody runs out of the frame. And we're now good to go right there. All right. Now... That's fine and all, except for the fact that a ramp hasn't actually happened. There hasn't been any speed ramp in here. All right, this was basically a cut to a slower speed. What I want to do is get in and actually add a speed ramp. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm just going to undo that time change I just did. I'm going to remove that effect by hitting F5, which is my shortcut. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find remove effect right here. And I'm just going to remove this match frame edit by simply right clicking on the timeline and saying remove match frame edits. All right. Because what we now want to do is we want to apply that time warp effect to the entire clip and get in and utilize keyframes to actually make that time change. So how are we going to go about doing this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back to the time warp effect. I'm simply going to take it, drag it, and drop it down onto our entire shot. Now, again, you'll notice that the anchor point now starts at 423 because that is the first frame of our entire shot. Now, what I'm going to do is much like with anything else, I have to pick the starting point of our animation, of our time change. And remember, that time change is still going to start at 100% speed before we ramp it down. I'm only going to ramp it down to 50% in this example. So what I'm going to do is simply come down here. I'm going to add a keyframe, just like I just did. And I'm just going to just sort of pick an arbitrary time, maybe right till about where he's sort of full out there, which is right there. I'm going to add another keyframe. And I'm simply going to grab that keyframe and drag it south like such. Now, as soon as I've done that and I come back and hit play, you'll see she now ramps down to that speed. And what I can now do is I can extend this shot even farther down so that we can ramp it back up. So why don't I just do that? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply take the shot. I'm just going to play it out here. And we'll wait till he disappears. Perfect. We're going to have to adjust this back, but that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. Because I just want to have more than I need right now. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that once we have made that change, you'll notice that in my timeline, it now says scene B, take one, 100% to 50% to 50%. All right. It knows that a speed ramp has happened, has occurred. 
okay? And it, it pretty much has already figured out that at some point, maybe we're gonna come back up in another speed ramp change, back up to maybe 100%, 75%, who knows? But let's do that. Let's wait till our actress gets to about there. And I'm gonna add another keyframe. I'm simply gonna click on the keyframe button. We're gonna come down to right about there. I'm gonna add another keyframe. And we're just gonna speed this up now, right to there, to 100%. So now if I come back, and we come down and we hit play. She slows down and then right about here, she's gonna ramp back up to full speed. And to be honest, that was a little bit, I'm not gonna say not noticeable, but maybe what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna grab both these two keyframes by holding shift on the keyboard and I'm just gonna drag them south. Now, you'll notice that as I drag south, they go perfectly together. Now at any point, what you have the ability to do, and I just kind of messed that up a little bit, is let's say I wanted to adjust these down the timeline one way or the other. What you have the ability to do is at any point you can hold one of the modifier keys. Now in this case, what I'm gonna do is just sort of show you how this works. Let me select both of these two keyframes right here. All right, what I wanna do is I wanna manipulate them and move them either closer towards the start of the shot or farther down to the end of the shot. So what is the easiest way to do this? Well, you'll remember I said I held the shift key to select those two keyframes and I can grab them and I can move them together. But what I actually wanna do is I want to slide them down the timeline together. Now you'll see that what I've actually done is I've actually clicked alt or option on the keyboard to move those two keyframes together. Now you'll notice that as I'm dragging, because I'm parked over this keyframe, I can still make time changes, which I don't wanna do. So once I've hit option or alt, if I hold shift, I can now move these locked into exactly where they are back and forth down the timeline to really finesse that time warp ramp that we've now created, all right? So remember, shift to select them both, option to move them together, option or alt, and then option and, uh, option and or alt and shift to lock them in place to move them together, all right? I'm just gonna put, sort of put it right here, I think it's fine, all right? And you'll see we come all the way down here and boom, they're gone, all right? So this is how we can easily get in and manipulate time by utilizing keyframes inside of the motion effect editor to really get in and ramp these however we wanna ramp them. Now with that said, I wanna talk about another concept that I think is exceptionally important and that's elastic keyframes versus fixed keyframes. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to remove this effect. I'm just gonna reset everything back to the beginning here. All right, I'm gonna hit Command or Control and eight to make sure that my effect palette is called up. I'm just gonna grab the time warp effect and we're just gonna do that ramp again. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna add a keyframe right there. I'm gonna come over here. Now, one thing I wanna mention about elastic versus fixed keyframes is, is that the keyframes will look slightly different based on the option that you have selected. Now, I have fixed keyframes selected here. I can tell that because it's the diamond-shaped keyframe. And you'll notice that if I drop down my menu, you'll see right here, there's my fixed keyframes, there's elastic keyframes. So what is the difference between the two? Well, let me show you, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and what I would like to do is I'd like to extend this shot down so that my psycho killer leaves the frame, all right? And what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna park myself over top of this keyframe right here. And you'll see that right here, we are at 708. I know that, because you can see that in my timeline, I'm actually at 708 of my timeline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna utilize trim just to push this shot down a little bit till he leaves the frame. And you'll notice that if I come back to that keyframe, I am still parked at 708. So nothing has changed as far as the keyframes go in my timeline, or more specifically, I guess, inside of the effect editor, the motion effect editor. However, based on what you have chosen, whether you've chosen fixed keyframes or elastic keyframes, this might change. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm gonna do is just undo what I did. I'm gonna come back into the motion effect editor window. I'm gonna click on the fast menu and I'm gonna switch over to elastic keyframes. Now you'll notice as soon as I do that, the keyframes themselves have changed. They're now just little triangles, basically the half diamond shape that we had before. Now nothing has changed as far as the timing goes. You'll notice that we're still at 708. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this concept is the same across all effects in Media Composer, not just inside the motion effect editor. 
Now if I come in and I come back down to the end of the timeline, so you'll remember before, 708 is our magic number right here, 708. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down just do exactly what I had just done. I'm just going to extend this down. It doesn't even really matter how far I extend it down. I'm just going to extend it down to there. He runs out of the frame. That's totally fine. What I want to draw your attention to now is that if I navigate back to that keyframe, you will notice that its time has actually changed. It's no longer at 7.08 anymore. It's now at 8.19. Well, why is that? What's being happened is, is that with elastic keyframes, their duration is actually being changed based on the timing change that I make to my shot. So if I adjust the shot 10% longer, those keyframes are going to be stretched out to match. Now, this is actually great in situations where you have animations that you've created and the client comes in and says, hey, can you make this, I don't know, 10 frames longer? And you don't want to have to go in and readjust all the animations so that they take place longer over those extra 10 frames. That's fantastic for the elastic keyframes. However, in the situation that we're working in, we want to extend the timeline down, but we don't want to manipulate anything that we've done as far as those keyframes go that is where the static or the fixed keyframes are going to come into play. So in this case, I'll say for the most part, for the motion effect effect that we had just created, once you've got the look that you want, you want to make sure, and I'm just going to undo what I just did here to put it right back where I had it. You're going to want to make sure that your keyframes are set to be fixed. So this way, when we get in and we make that adjustment to the end of our timeline, so our psycho killer leaves, it's not going to make an impact on the animation that we created with the ramp effect. It's just going to let the scene end as we expected it to. So keep that in mind. Fixed keyframes are going to leave your animation where they are, irrelevant of what you do at the start of your timeline or at the end of your timeline as far as adjusting, adding frames, taking frames out. That animation is going to stay the way that you had it. With the elastic keyframes, those keyframes are going to be impacted directly based on the timing changes you make at the start and at the end of your clips. And that keyframe adjustment will be made accordingly so that they fit over the same amount of time that they originally did based on the new duration of your clip. All right. So I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. As always, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. Don't forget to utilize those links in the show notes below. Head on over to their website. Use that coupon code MC101 when you are renewing your Media Composer subscription license. And as always, don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.